I'm going to use them to shut them up. I'm going to use this one because this one will bring glory. I have watched people who have it made in the shade. I mean, just a silver spoon in their mouth and go from top all the way down to nothing. And we, we like to look at it. Where are they now? How did you get to be? I remember watching Gary Coleman when Gary Coleman was doing all the TV shows. I know there's a lot. Uh, it's only the older people. I know some of y'all remember different strokes. And Gary Coleman was doing, I mean, all the TV movies and stuff. And then when I saw Gary Coleman being the security guard somewhere, what happened to Gary Coleman? It was his mama. No, it wasn't. It was Gary Coleman. His mama wasn't the security guard. <laughs> What happened? It's just been a downward slope. Next thing you know, someone killed him. It's easy when you're at the top, but it's hard when it's at the bottom. And guess what God always likes to start with? Jesus, I'm going to have you being born, surrounded by animals. And I'm going to have you be put in the manger. And see, we made that sound so pretty. I mean, when you hear the Christmas story, oh, yes, how beautiful it is. You know what the manger was. Jesus, when you're born, we're going to clean out where the animals eat. We're going to get some rags, pretty swaddling clothes. You can get some rags and wrap it around you and stick you in there. And when people hear it, they'll be like, oh, Christmas. Mary lay down right there, have that baby right there. Just kind of shuffle the manure over. It's all right. Here comes the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Come on, this is the Jesus that you believe in. And how dare you put people down. This is the Christ that I got saved through. The one who says, Lord God, I shall take off Shekinah. And go down there and be born from a little teenage girl. That same one that they spit on and ripped his beard out and put a crown of thorns. That same one who is the fairest of 10,000 who is the bright and morning star. The glory of the Father has become flesh and men didn't recognize it. Yet yeah, start getting to where you can look at people and see God through them. Well, they're not saved yet, but the potential is right there. It is right there. Your look is condescending. Fix the look. Stop rolling your eyes. Start doing, stop doing the little neck thing. Get the right attitude. You shall know them because they love one another. When anyone ever told you that you, they can see love in your eyes. I'm a, I'm a prophet, and prophet are hard people. You know how hard it was for me to have a love in my eyes? Because I can see through the mess. But I have to, despite the mess, God, you're able in them to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can ask or even imagine. See, we like using it for things. Start using that for people. I see the potential in you. I see the pot Y'all have to see Nene when she came here the first time. When I do it, y'all don't believe it because Nene was all ghetto, ghetto and she was to the side. Came in and look at her now. 
I went to her school and talked to her teachers. Yeah, I met old sometimes. I don't know what you did to that girl, but keep on doing what you're doing. It would have been easy to look at Nene and say, oh, forget this one. She's too ghetto for me. You know what we did instead? We loved her. Took her to our house and, you know, Nene, these are my kids. You'll be my kid, too. What you mean? You're kidding. I don't, I don't need you. Yeah, you do. You just don't know it yet. You've been waiting for someone like me all your life. God wants us to come up a little higher. When we see these Wednesday folks come in here, a lot of us have never even been, been to one CR. I sat up this morning, I got up at three in the morning and I said, Lord God, most of our people only show up on Sunday mornings. We don't see him again for the rest of the week. I say, Lord God, what's wrong with that? And God says, they are all into their own life. I'm important. They're not so important, but I'm important. You put yourself in that position, that is very uncomfortable because you will need help from others. And they'll remember you were too important to be there before. We want something that we don't have. And I, I definitely want to go into scripture. I don't want to just talk. And I know I am, I am full, but I tell you, I've been having some time with God to where I am very full and I'm enjoying it. Got a little refresher last Sunday. <laughs> Today I feel like doubly. I really, really want to give a word. Father, we thank you for those who are here. The ones who are here are the ones that need to be here. Father, we're going to keep this word to ourselves and we're going to hide it in our hearts. We're not going to begin to think of if this person could be here or if the other person could be here. If they can hear this, it will be so good for them. Lord God, it is good for us to be here. It is good that we get to hear what God is saying to this body at this moment. Father, I see nations opening where they have been closed. And I see, Lord God, there are those who are already hungry and ready for the word. And Father, they were in praying that someone can come and show them to God. And you know, here we are so stuck with stuff that stuff has us stuck. Well, this morning, Lord, we get unstuck. We begin to get free of the things that have kept us bound. And we begin to look even bigger. See what you have in mind for us. And no longer what our plans are. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. We have put the cart before the horse. And I'm going to show it to you from scripture. Matthew 16, 24. Then he said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what would a, or would a man give to exchange for his soul? He that saves his life will lose it. Let me put it in simpler terms. If you are driving yourself, 
you will live a life for nothing. If you get up and what shall I do today? And you never question, there was one that made me who already wrote down the plans he had for me. Should I not inquire of the one who knew me before? See, God told the prophet, I, I know you. I've known you since your mother's belly. I even watch you being formed. You imagine God watch you being formed. Don't tell me he's not interested in you. Now let's stop and think of all the people we've called trash that God watched being formed. That God himself said, I'm paying attention. His lungs will start to work on their own today. I'm paying attention. Do you hear that heartbeat? Oh, new neurons are being developed in the brain. I'm watching. Oh, look, his, he has his fingers. And you can see the fingerprint. God is watching the whole process, and then they're born and get addicted to some substance, so we feel we have all the justification to call them names. Do we forget that God can use anybody? Oh, I've been in church all my life. I know the word. The word killeth. But the spirit brings life. I watch people that have no word and just get saved. This happened before. My wife can tell you. It's happened in our ministry. Just got saved. Lay hands on someone and they hit the ground. What word did they have? They had no word. What depth did they have? They weren't deep at all. Why did they do that? Because they saw someone do it. What do we call that? We call that being a child. Some of us need to learn how to be more childlike, not childish. Childlike. We used to say it for the bad things. Y'all remember? Monkey see, monkey do. When you start falling after, but it's the bad thing, how about we start doing that for God? Because Paul say, come on, y'all, follow me as I follow Christ. Do what you've seen me do. I have watched Donna. Donna has changed a lot. The moment you say you got a little headache, Donna goes up there and puts her hand on your head and starts praying that God will take that headache away. Hey, y'all didn't know Donna before she came here. Donna wouldn't be that bold. And I never stop and, Donna, what are you doing? Keep on doing it, Donna. Why? Because she, this is how faith works. Are you feeling any better? That's not important. What do you mean that's not, I'm praying for you to feel better. That's not the important thing. Well, why now? Because right now, you're walking by faith. Keep on walking by faith. Because when you walk by faith, eventually the natural thing has to catch up. Eventually, people will get those headaches gone. Eventually, but what has to happen? You have to go to that transition of, hey, I look like, like an idiot just praying for people. I'm just doing it and nothing's happening. But I heard that crazy pastor that said one day it will. And when it does, it'll continue to happen more often. And then after a while, I'll be like, headache? Man, I moved past the headache. Now I'm trying to pray for cancer, leukemia. <laughs> Uh, you start moving up to things that are harder. You know, you got to start somewhere. But what do we do when we see someone start? What you doing? Don't do that. You know, you're interrupting the service. What? Whose service are you interrupting? Because if someone comes up here right now and says, Pastor, I want to pray for you, you know what I'll do? Come on, pray. The message and wait. 
See, we have the Holy Spirit peg, like, you know, he's, he's kind of crazy. Oh, we don't want to offend the Holy Spirit. Do what God says, and you can't offend the Holy Spirit. Come on. He is God. Amen. How are you going to offend the one that told you what to do? Have you seen people prophesy? Usually it happens in the middle of a message. I don't know if y'all know that. In the very middle of a message, someone says, I have a word from God. Because I'd rather God speak. But see, we're not used to that. Because to put someone down, we have to put somebody up. We put people down, and then we lift up others. We want to be like you. You might be lifting them up, and you're about to toss them over the side. Because we pump them up so much, they get proud. They walk around and look at people like you. I've gone to places where people look at me so bad. And then when they find out I'm the guest speaker, it's like, oh, I didn't know. Oh, like, oh, yeah, now your attitude changed, right? Yeah, when I walked in, you're like, sit right there. It's like, hello, uh, be a nicer usher. You know, it's like, just go and maybe just put the hand motion. Don't, don't sit there and give me attitude. We decide who is worthy. And who is not? Who made you God? I, I know I, I wasn't here last Sunday. I know I, I know it seems a little mean. I'm not trying to be mean. I, I am explaining to you God is going to open this ministry to where people from other nations are going to leave their nation to come here and see the move of God that is happening here. And we need to be able to sit right next to someone who is stinking to no end and sit there and say, Lord, God, let me endure and let me not show it. Because they're not coming from our culture. You go to parts of Africa, people stink, and that's normal. They think your perfume is stinky. What happened when they come here? Oh, well, you know, we don't do it like that. You got to get, you learn some of the, the United States of America. We start acting all ghetto. Don't you see? I'm going to do just emotions, all right? When we get people who are different than us, this is our motion. Isn't that what we call ghetto? We want our culture to be the important culture. We're going to belittle yours because y'all are backward. No, they're not. I know they're not backward. I've been to some of them. You give them one pencil. By the end of the school year, they still have that same one pencil. It might be a little nub, but they have so taken care of that one pencil because it's the only one they have. How many packs you buy per month? Yeah, they're not backward. Matter of fact, most of the nations in, the, in, in Africa are right now, according to test, doing better than we are. What do we have to do? You walk in the door, you precious man, you precious woman of God. You may not know him, but I pray that today will be the day you get to know him. I, I so love you. I know it's hard for you to accept. I love you because people have always mistreated you. They've always belittled you. But you know, I feel it for you. I love you because Christ loves you. And he has commanded me to love my enemy and you're my friend. Come on. Trash people. There is no such thing. How much does one soul, how much is it worth? Can you come up with a figure? Because you know the truth is there's nothing that you have that can buy one soul. There's nothing that we have combined 
to be able to purchase one soul? What is the most expensive thing in all of God's creation? It's a soul. That's why God himself had to send his son to die for a ransom for it. It's the most expensive thing. And we want to just throw it out. You know, we're not of the same class. We don't have the same education level. You know, we don't come from the same ethnic background. We come up with all these futile things, and I'll prove it to you they're futile. Let you need my blood, and you'll forget all the other stuff. But whose blood are we supposed to have anyway? Because when I got saved, according to the word of God, he says, former things have now become new. You have been, we call it born again. I have a new father whose DNA is going through my bloodstream. And he is love. We have this thing now, and it really got me mad I, when I heard about it. I was listening to a survey of how many people believe that everyone is going to go to heaven in the church. And 25% of church-going people in the United States believe everyone will go to heaven. That's 25%. I'm so sorry to have to tell you. No. Everyone is not going to go to heaven. There is one way. <laughs> you ever been on one way going the wrong way? I know I have. In the middle of, of the night, I did not know it was on the opposite side, and I see headlights coming towards me. And they didn't even slow down either, man. I had to hit that side of the road really quick. And I'm like, man, you could have at least blow the horn or something or let me know I was in the wrong way. There are many that are in the wrong way. And they're going to stay going the wrong way because they have not met up with the love yet. They have not. I've had some people that ask me, and I, and I, don't, I know they don't mean any harm. I, I know they're good people. And they asked me, he said, how do you get white people to come to your church? And I'm like, you know, if you would have asked me that several years ago, I would have told you I didn't even know I had white people at my church. But because I've lived in Alabama, I understand what you're asking. He said, this is how. I love them. I mean, I love them with everything in me. Love has a way of casting out all fear. Oh, that's in the Bible. I don't know if you know this, but some people that are not of my race are kind of scared of folks of my color. But when you love them, that just goes away. It's just not a big deal. And I'm not the only one. There are many people who are learning God is love. That's one of the attributes of God. Do you know that? God is love. You know what hell is? Where love isn't. That don't sound like a place I want to go to. Because all of us have the desire to be loved. Everyone in here wants somebody to love them. And you can be all hard if you want to say, I don't need it. Yes, you do. That's why people get hurt with love. Oh, he did me wrong. He didn't really love you, by the way. That's why he did what he did. You thought he did. That wasn't love. Well, what love really is, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 13. How does it start? Love is patient. Love is kind. Does not envy. Does not boast. Is not proud. Is not rude. Is not self-seeking. It's amazing. If I give my body to be burned and don't love, if I give away everything that I possess and don't love, I'm what? I'm just a tinkling brass. 
Ding, 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 ding. God wants us to love because you know prophecy is going to pass. <laughs> but you know what will remain? Love. Love will remain. So why don't we teach on love anymore? I mean, it's not like, you know, the Beatles, all you need is love, love. And it's not the other extreme either. What love got to do with it? Those are the two opposite poles. One is not really love. Beatles didn't really talk about all you need is love. They were more talking about all you need is acceptance. Because when I love you, nay, nay, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Because I love you, I'm going to end up hurting you. I'm going to hurt all y'all. And I'm going to do it on purpose. Because I don't want you to fall down and get hurt even worse. I'm going to tell you the truth with love. I'm going to mix it in there. I'm not going to be all brutal. Come on, just come on, let's bring it on. No, honey, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to hurt yourself. You can't tell me what to do. Well, if you keep going how you're going, you're going to hurt yourself. But after you hurt yourself, I'll still be here. Come on, how many of you have actually done that? I'm going to tell you, some of our older folks, they know how to love their kids through mess. They've seen the kids go through stuff, and I, I'm still here. No, I don't like what you did, but I'm still here. Nothing's changed. Now let's expand it from our family and give it away. Give it away to other people who are crying to be loved. You have to see my wife when she goes out and do Zumba with a whole bunch of kids. Ms. Donna's been there, and uh, so has Ms. Erica. Uh, Darcy, too. 600 kids. I mean, uh, Jennifer is just like, come on, follow me. You see 600 kids, just follow her back and forth. I'm like, what does Jennifer have? Oh, she's famous. No, she's not famous. Jennifer will pay attention to every single child. She's not unapproachable. They go, hi, Zumba girl. Hey, how you doing, sweetie? Did you enjoy Zumba today? I've had to learn some things from her because I was the opposite. I, can't, I didn't want to be around people. Get her. Everybody want to be around her. And I'm like, okay, you can keep them. I don't want. I, oh, wait a second. Lord, you calling me to do what? God, I don't like people. They wear me out. You want me to, what? Okay, Lord, I've lost everything before. I don't want to go through that again. Father, teach me how to love. I'm not a sufferer. Just, I want to learn. Because it's not in me naturally. I don't naturally love people. Can you do a miracle in me? Can you make me look like love? Can you make it look so gentle that people know it's not nothing perverted? Can you make it to where the little ones can notice it? If we were to love people, all of you in here will have a following. Oh, that's just a lot already. You won't have to worry about we need to get more members of the church. We need to get more tithers. You won't have to worry about all of the, uh, how come all those people are coming with you? Uh, Bishop, all I did was love them. And the more people I love, the more people show up. And they just keep on coming. And I don't know why they keep on coming, but all I can do is love them. 
See, when you talk about love, I can't, the first day Nene came here, I couldn't grab her and say, okay, Nene, honey, we're going to work on you, and we're going to have you looking more like a girl. And I couldn't do that. Because she came, she, she came in looking hard. She didn't come in with the, the, you see her hair now? She didn't come in like that. She is girly now. Some of you were here when she came in. She was very hard. I let her do stuff and I didn't even critique her. Go ahead. Until when her heart started to break. Until when she came and says, you know, I do need you to be my dad. I do want you to speak into my life. I do want to be blessed and not curse. I want my offsprings to be blessed. I need what it is to know what it is to have a man in my life before I get married. When her heart turned to me, this is what Malachi ended with. I will turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the hearts of the sons to the fathers lest I smite the earth with a curse. There has to be a turning to one another. Because if not, there is a curse, and the curse is going on right now. Say, uh, Pastor, what is that curse? Immaturity. No father to raise him up to be a man. No figure to say, I am going to be like you are, amen. Instead, the dads themselves are childish. Oh, I don't need to put up with this. I'm leaving. No, we don't need the man that's going to be leaving. We had that generations ago. We need a man that's going to sit there. You know what? I don't like it, but I'm staying. So I'm not going to have you growing up like how I grew up without a father. You're going to have a man in your life. We need to grow up now. Our generation of kids that are in here, man, don't you know how blessed it is to have mom and dad? Because you've got Nene right here that says, I wish. And we're going to have more like Nene coming in here say, I wish. And when they come in, I need to have more men than just me saying, I will. See, ladies have been doing their job. They've, I've been the mom and the dad. Now it's time for the dad to step in there and understand this is a role that's needed. How do you leave your own kids and say you love? How dare you even say you love? It is natural to love your own first. So rise up. You men of valor. Right? Chris, you're not too young to begin to father some of these young kids that are without a father. Don't look at me like that because I did it at your age. Y'all y'all heard of that Saran so so what's his last name? So so see he that didn't used to be his name. He changed his name. But when I was eighteen years old, his name was Marcus. Marcus, you want to go spend the weekend over my house? Yeah, okay. All right, let me go ask your mom. Sister Beverly, can Marcus come spend uh, or the night over my house? Uh, tomorrow I'm going to take him go-kart riding and, you know, uh, yeah, because, you know, I know, I know his dad. Yeah. Okay, sure. He's now a councilman. But weekends for years at a time. He was at the barracks with me when it wasn't nothing crazy. Because I know you say that stuff to now, uh, people all oh, wonder. No, it wasn't nothing crazy. It was a little kid and me acting like a dad at 18 years old. My wife's cousins can tell you I'm their dad. I raised them up. I didn't wait till I had my own kids to say, now I get to do it. I saw a need and I filled it. I saw a need 
and I filled it. I didn't wait. Father, would you give me all that I need so I can do this? That's a cop out. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. That's a cop out. A lot of us are so used to saying cop outs that we don't know we say it. And we say, well, I am not equipped for that. Whom he calls, he equips. Amen. Well, I haven't gone through the process that I need. The process is now. You can come up with all the little things that you've heard the world say, and it does not work for God. Because God says in, this, in his word in James chapter 1, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives freely and without reproach, and it shall be given to him. Don't say, no, I'm not a quick father. I don't have it, but you do. Thank you that you want to give it for free. Let's end the cop out, cop out stuff. I don't know if I want to go to another country. I've never experienced. Father, I didn't experience it, but you give it to me for free. There's nothing that comes against you that is not of men. You don't have no supernatural anything coming against you. Oh, are you going to do what I tell you? It's very natural. Start trying to be so religious. No, the enemy don't have you on the top of his list. I'll be surprised if you're on the list at all. See, sometimes we make ourselves more important than we are by saying, you know, the devil is after me. The devil has a lot of other stuff to do. He is but one. God is the only one that's omniscient omnipresent omnipotent come on get over yourself stop blaming the enemy for stuff that you want to do the bible says that when let no man says he's tempted by god but he is tempted by his own lust and entice you're doing what you want to do but then want to make it all sound religious oh yeah the enemy is after me really why Because, hey, if he's after you because you're winning souls, guess what? He that wins souls is wise. You are okay. But if you're not being effective, now it's time to get effective. First thing is, let's turn love back on again. Father, let me love the one that no one wants to love. When I got our two boys to come in our house, man, I did not like them at all. It took me a really long time, and my wife wanted to love him. Honey, I, we need to love him. I said, no, that's too much. What do you mean? I'm praying that I can like him. What do you mean? Love has to start somewhere, and I believe if I like him, I can get to love him. Father, help me like him. Now I know some of y'all looking at me with that tone of voice. But if you had a kid that every time he went to the bathroom, he started eating it after he finished, you, you're not going to be looking at me like that. You don't know the stuff we had to go through, that we had to daily, Lord God, today let me like him. Today let me find something good. Today. Man, I'll die for my boys now. Don't you dare try to hurt them. Because I love my boys. Because they are my boys. Bless is the man whose quiver is full of them. I got two more that I didn't even have to go through the process to get them. Well, that's what God told the he Hebrew people. I'm going to give you fields that you didn't even plant. That's how I see my two boys. I didn't have to work for them. They were added on to me. And when they get married and they have their kids, those are my grandkids. They're going to call me granddad or papa or however they say it around here. Because <laughs> they're mine. But it didn't start that way. You can't look at me and not see that I, I love my boys. 
I love my boys, but they were not lovable. Give it time. Give it time. They're lovable now. They're cute little things. And I'm like, boy, Lord God, it's going to be hard to have cute boys. Because, oh, man, these girls are getting a little ferocious now. <laughs> girls don't play now. You know, it's not the boys going after the girls. It's the girls going after the boys. So it, uh, things has turned. And, you know, now I have three boys. <laughs> When we begin to love people, they'll start all of a sudden wanting to know about God. You know, people that have it hard all the time don't go to God automatically. They have to run into someone that reminds them that God exists. Yeah, I can see there is a God. Well, how do you see it? Because you're strange. How am I strange? I can't put my finger on it, but there's something kind of off on you. What do you mean off? Well, I don't really mean off. It's just that I don't know. So will it help you that the Bible says we are to be peculiar? Yeah, that's it. You're peculiar. So yeah. I, uh, it, but there's also some other things. Yeah, the Bible says that we are aliens because we're not of this world. You're from Mars? No, we're not that kind of alien. We're alien as someone who comes from another country to this country illegally. You're illegal? Yes, I am. Because I'm taking back from the enemy. Come on, he didn't give me permission to come in. <laughs> I'm taking it back. He's like, that's not yours. My health is not yours. I'm taking that back. Uh, my kids, they're not yours. I'm taking that back. Hey, hey, uh, my wife, she's not yours. I'm taking that back. You know, I'm going to college now. I said, well, you're going to be 44 years old. Why are you in college? Because I'm taking that back. says, I know who I am in Christ. Now I have to go and take everything that the canker worm and the locusts and the caterpillar and all. I need to go and take all their stuff. I'm going to the enemy's camp. And that's where we are. We're in the enemy's camp. Why are you talking like it's your camp? Hey, girl, how you doing? So nice to see you. you know, when you're in the enemy's camp, you're covert. What are you doing? I'm checking the enemy out. Why? Because I'm tired of him for years checking me out. Now it's my turn to go in and start taking back what he stole from me. So he took it from me. How dare he take that which was not his. Now I'm going to take it back to where it hurts. And I know the primary tool to do it with is love. Y'all don't know how many of these young people we have here are crying out. Please love me. Please, would you please? Please don't just look at me and look away. Please at least come and put your hand on my shoulder. Please, please just say, you know, my eyes are pretty. Please, I mean, any compliment will do. I just want just a little bit of attention. Just can you please interrupt all your busy day and just look at my direction. I went to the drive-thru and I did something really odd at a drive-thru. I'm at Burger King. Girl says, gave me her order, and I'm just looking at her. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. What's wrong with you? What do you mean? You trying to check me out? No, I'm trying to notice you. What do you mean? You are a person worthy that my eyes shall see you when you speak. 
People don't look at me when I thought, I just give them the bag and tell them I have a nice day. I said, and because of that, you go to the pornography sites. I didn't even mean to start prophesying to this young lady. I didn't even mean to. Because of a lack of affection, she goes and looks for affection in strange places. And here we are, the body of Christ, who refuse to acknowledge people and don't even mean to. We continually throw them in the trash. I'm not even going to look at you. Just go ahead and climb in. Not even worthy of my looking at you. I've been told your eyes are the windows of the soul. Look at people. Stop walking around with your head down. That's in the Old Testament is being low cast. Hey, look up for where comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. Why are you so downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in God. Why is it that my eyes are set right here in front so I can see things from a distance? But if I'm always looking down, how do I have God vision looking at my feet? I got to acknowledge people. Walk around and make it, make it your goal to at least say hello to one person every day. After a while, it catches on. You don't even mean to. You walk in, Dollar General, hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. Do I know you? No, um, but I, if you want, we can get to know each other. What's wrong with you? Not like that. I'm a man, all man, <laughs> not like that. I just want to get to know you. Man, you're strange. Really? Then why in the inside you're saying, man, if I could meet more people like him? Oh, well, well, yeah, well, yeah. See, we all of a sudden we break those barriers that people put up, but just being completely honest. And then you find, hey, you know what? I like that person. I like being next to that. I, there's a young man in, in school, and I told him, I said, I love to see you. He's like, why? Because you are always smiling. You walk in, you just smile. Every time you come in here, you just smile. And when I'm in a Grumpy mood, I just look at your direction. Says you just have that one quality that I don't even know you, but I tell you what, keep on smiling. Many days, you've made my day. I watch now that I'm learning to give people compliments. I got a 16-year-old that is always throwing away compliments. Now I'm like, son, you can't just throw that at girls like that. It's a, and, uh, no, son, they just took it somewhere else because you're very nice. But, dad, I'm just being nice. She does have nice eyes. Yes, but you're 16 years old. <laughs> Don't say it like that. <laughs> but, see, now he has it in him. And I watch Ariel. Now Ariel does it, too. Ariel just throws compliments at people. Oh, I like your hair. Oh, what you do it like that? That is so pretty. Look at your nails. What happened now? I have kids that people want to be around because they've learned how to be friendly. They make people's day. How many of you would love to be around people that just brighten up your day? So now I tell you this. Begin to brighten up others. Because the Bible says you reap what you sow. Start doing that that you want others to do to you. Start brightening up people's uh, day. I know Erica did. She said, put it on Facebook. I did a bishop move. I didn't even know I had a move all on my own. But she went to Burger King and paid for someone behind her. And drove off. I guarantee you that shocked the mess out of that person. 
I guarantee you that what? I love to do it at toll roads. I mean, I, if you lived in Florida, you, you, you would know. You go through a lot of tolls in Florida and pay for my, hey, I'm paying for the person behind me. And then as soon as they let me go, it's like, what are you doing? I don't want them to catch up to me. Because I know they're going to be driving as fast as they can trying to catch up so they can say thank you. But I want God to get the glory. What does it cost you? Nothing, really. A quarter, $3, $4, $5, $6. What did you gain? See, sometimes you may not even know. I, one time I was driving to Virginia, and God spoke to me, and I was, I was 18 years old. I was uh, at the School of Music, Norfolk, Virginia, and God says, I want you to put a gallon of gas in the trunk. Maybe something's going to happen to my car. I need a gallon. I mean, I'm trying to think of why God is telling me to do this. And I'm like, okay, Lord God, please don't let me be stranded in the wrong place. You know, some places around here are just not good places to be stopped. So, okay, okay, there's a gallon. In the middle of the night, there are these guys by the hall, highway. They ran out of gas. I didn't wait to hear God's voice. I mean, some of us, you know, we get so religious that I want to hear the next thing that God has to say. I just figured, I got a gallon of gas in my trunk. They're out of gas. I stop, open my trunk, grab the gallon of gas, gave the gallon of gas, went back in my car, turned the car on, drove off, even before they even had a chance to say thank you because they had no idea what I gave them. I really believe that to this very day they think I was an angel that drove by. Isn't that awesome that someone would think you're an angel? Imagine blessing someone all of a sudden in a place that, hey, you know what? I think God visited me with an angel today. It's kind of cool. I'll never be one, but it's kind of cool. Begin to go out of your way. Even start when you get to work tomorrow, Lord God, create an occasion that I can bless someone today. I've, I know people who said that they didn't even have money, and God told them to give somebody some money, and they opened the wallet, and they had money in there. When... You begin to pray, Lord, I want to bless someone today. Do you know that God bless you so you can be a blessing? So begin to bless people. Stop being so stingy. That's why you don't hardly get money because you're stingy. Stop being stingy. Well, I don't know about this is for my lunch. Hey, you don't look too skinny. You know, you can go ahead and give up a meal and give it to somebody else. It's okay. You will survive it. Bless somebody. And don't put it on Facebook after you do it. D don't do it because then you're getting a reward already. You kind of forfeited what you just did. Do it and let God be able to see it. Don't come here next Sunday. I want to give a testimony. I, I did what Bishop said to do, and this is, no, no, don't do that. We want to get to where this is normal for us. To love has to be born in us. It has to be something that we nourish it's not something that this is natural. Everybody knows how to do it. If it was natural, it wouldn't say in the Bible, older women teach the young women how to love their husbands and their children. If it was natural, they wouldn't need to learn how to do that. It is not natural. We have to nourish it. Cause it to grow. Teenagers, you find that oddball in school, the one that everybody picks on. And that's the one you love the most. 
and I'm telling you something hard to do because you might get on that list and no one wants to be around you. I did it. I was 13 years old. There was this boy we called Boots. He was really fat. He would sweat in the worst places. He always looked like he peed himself. And I, hey Boots, you wanna go get something to eat? And I realized that the f popular people start, okay, I don't wanna be around you because you're a friend with Boots. So eventually I had lots of friends and they were all the outcasts. But I got to high school and I ran my mouth a little too much. You know, I'm Panamanian, sometimes I do that. I said something to the football team in their workout room with the whole football team in there. And the whole football team got up and they were gonna beat me to a pulp. And this big, tall, built guy got up and he says, y'all gonna leave Whitey alone. <laughs> and I'm like, Whitey, who are you? Whitey, you don't remember me? <laughs> Goliath, you big, man, you big and whew, sit back down, you got me scared. Whitey, it's Boots. Boots went from being the kid that everybody made fun of to the biggest guy in the football team. So you never know how someone is going to end up. Stop being all critical of folks. Hey, if no one wants to befriend someone, they should be the first one you're looking at to be their friend. Because here's the one thing, they will always appreciate it. Up to now, hey, Boots is my friend on Facebook. If I were to tell Boots, Boots, I have a pastor's appreciation coming up. Would you fly over here to come? I guarantee you Boots will be here. Because I hung around him for three years while nobody else wanted to even talk to him. And I was a popular piano player. Boots weren't even playing football. He was just fat. One summer, he said everything changed. Show love. So let me give you the order, because there's an order. You start loving at home. Don't go outside the house trying to love other people and you can't even stand your own brother and sister. Start right there, start at home. You know what, Lord, I'm, I need love for my mama. Cause she's getting my nerves. Lord God, let me love my mama. I really need to love her. I really need, I need for this to be done here before I get hypocritical and start loving everybody everywhere else. You start at home. Teenagers, y'all hear me. You start at home. Love does not always have you doing what you want to do. You got to do some stuff you don't want to do. Go clean the bathroom. Ah. I did pray for love. Lord God, let me love her even while I'm in this bathroom. I just uh, love her. I just love her. I just. Then we're a church family. Lord God, you know sister so and so. She's get on my nerves. Let me love her. Then you leave this family and you go to the school family. Father, that teacher gets on my lap, let me love him. See, after a while, you just love people. I told you I went to Peru, and in Peru, they're racist. They don't like black folks. But I love them, and they love me back. Y'all don't know how bad it was. I went to go buy some ice cream at the ice cream store, and the two people behind the counter ducked under the counter. What are you doing? Uh, you're not going to rob us? No, I'm going to buy ice cream. But I love them. 
and I walk into people's houses and I watch that stereotype just fall off of them. It's just like, man, why did I even have that stereotype? Look at you. You're nothing like what I thought you were. No, because God is love and God is in me. Therefore, I love. You love. You want to be loved? Then love. Yeah, I'm asking you to give that that you didn't get. Start pouring it out. You won't run out, I promise. You won't run out of love. Because God is love. <laughs> There's no way you can run out of it. You just start pouring and you'll see people start pouring back to you. Everyone in here. I know you've heard this from people and it's like in one ear and out the next. I love you enough to be able to suffer with you when you're suffering. Not to sit there and just like, oh, whatever. When you're going through something, I get in that little corner, Lord God. I don't want them to go through this. Lord God, pull them through. Man, I'm hurting for them. We have some of our members here. If y'all knew some of the things they have to go through, you'll come here next Sunday and be like, you know, I'm so glad you're here because I know how hard it is for you to get in here. I appreciate you going through all that you're going to go through and are going through right now just to be here. Go in and call one of our friends, one of my Panamanian friends this week. Jennifer wanted to invite him to for pastor's appreciation. They live here in the city. Every time there's a Panamanian function, this guy cooks. She wanted him to cook some Panamanian food. He's an RMC in a coma. And we thought, how did we not know? Why is it that we're finding out now? Why? Because my life is so busy, I can't know about everybody. And she began to pray with my wife over the phone. I need you to pray with me. My wife started to pray that he'll recover. That's not what I need you to pray for. What is it that you need me to pray for then? I have to decide whether to leave the machine on or to turn it off. How do you love someone when they're going through? You allow yourself to go through with them. Hey, I'm here. We're going to come by to visit. We'll go to the hospital. I'm here with you. I'm here for you. We're going to give our time and make sure that we're with you during this process, no matter what happens. If God heals him and he recovers, hey, man, we're with you until he recovers. If he should pass, we're going to be with you with the passing. He says, why? He's important to us, and he's in the bed, and we can't do anything else for him right now. But we can for you. By the way, they're not Christians. How much more important is it now? Come on, be open to people. Go to Walmart, look at the usher in the eye. Hello, hi, how are you? If not, sit there and just watch. Watch as the usher says hi to people and they just walk by. And some of them are sitting right there in church. They're getting their word on, but the word is not being activated in them because they're not showing a love to other people. I promise you, you start loving folks, folks will start loving you. Because it reciprocates. You give it out, it gives back. You give, it gives back. You give. What's these teenagers around me? See, 
if they don't give love back to me. All the teenagers in here. I remember when we got the teenagers to come in, every single one of them was scared of me. Yeah, there's something wrong about him. I just I don't know. Look at them now. If I start playing with them, they'll play back. Say, what is that? What kind of pastor would sit there and play with the teenagers? One that knows how to be childlike. So when they want to really talk to me, I am still approachable. Have you seen the little kids? How many of the little kids are scared of me? You notice none of the little kids are scared of me. How many churches you've gone to where the little kids are scared of the pastors? When you start to love people, they start loving you back. And they don't even mean to. It's just like, okay, I just, I'm praying for the pastor. Why are you praying for the pastor? Oh, because he's not feeling good. Which teenager uh, prays for their pastor? <laughs> you start to love. You become important. And everyone in here wants to be important. Everyone does. Then start a loving. Donna has a whole bunch of kids at her school. She loves them. You know how I know she loves them? We are having this function going to Jamaica. Half of her kids are going with us. They're not even members of our church. Oh, my church is having a trip to Jamaica. I want to go. Why? Well, hey, she's showing them love. So now they want to show love. I want to go to another country and show love to other people. Man, I want to. Can I do it every year? Can I go to another country and show it to love to other people every year? Yeah, but let's also do it here. Because if not, it's just hypocritical. Let us pray. Father, it is so hard to love when you've been hurt. It is hard to put our guards down and allow people to come in. Father, but you send your son Jesus, and not once did he try to defend himself. He allowed everything to be done to him. He didn't even cry out. Father, and when it was almost done, he looked at the people with hatred in their eyes. And he told you, don't hold this against them, for they don't know what they're doing. Father, we're so far from that. We so easily judge people. Lord God, love keeps no records of harm. Right now, Father, that record that we have before our eyes and our mind, we begin to rip it up. They don't owe us anything because they don't know what they do. Lord God, you love freely. You wanted nothing back in return. Now help us to love freely as well. Lord God, since we got it for free, then we should give it away for free. Father, that we once again will be known. Lord God, as the church in Philippi. Lord God, church of Philadelphia. Lord God, the church of Corinth. The church in Galatia. Because they loved one another. Let us be known as the people who love one another. Father, and sometimes the world can't tell the difference between a love and a lust. So I even say that they'll be able to tell the difference that it is not lust, but it is a love. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, we have no throwaway people. None. And no throwaway people will ever walk through our doors because there are none who are throwaway. In the name of Jesus, amen.